I get that at this point, there is nothing revolutionary left to say about phase four of the MCU. The naysayers who wanted to hate every second of it have done so, and the MCU superfans who plan to love it all and defend it to the hilt have done exactly that. I'm not sure at what point franchises gained fans and detractors like sports teams, but it's utterly exhausting. People either love or hate everything a franchise puts out, and I don't understand why this has become mainstream. But I maintain that there's still lots of people like me out there, utterly baffled people who take each project as it comes and judge it on quality after it comes out as opposed to before. But anyway, Phase 4 has left me feeling a bit cold. It's had some real highs, but it has so often devolved into the same problems around humour, pacing and characterization. But I'm not going to talk about them. Not only because YouTube is completely full of those videos already, but also because none of those issues really apply to She-Hulk. Having said that, it has its own issues, and I can safely conclude that She-Hulk is a complete and utter mess. This is the first MCU project that I haven't enjoyed, even a little bit. I was writing my review for a big ranking video that I'm going to do in the future, but honestly, I just had too many thoughts, and I needed to get some of my thoughts down now before She-Hulk is absolutely forgotten amid the onslaught of the next 10 MCU projects. Maybe you think that She-Hulk was a great show, and that's that's great, good for you, but I just feel the need to get across my very confused feelings to this very, very weird show. The biggest distinction that She-Hulk makes between itself and the rest of the cinematic juggernaut that it's situated within is that She-Hulk is first and foremost a comedy, an American legal comedy in the vein of Ally McBeal. This approach should be refreshing. It certainly was as a pitch. So many MCU shows and films have a large focus on comedy, but do so within the character drama stories that they are telling. And this leads to a wonky tone, with the story and the drama deliberately being undercut for jokes. She-Hulk doesn't have that issue, because it isn't trying to be serious. It's just a comedy. The issue here is rather that it's just not funny. Which is weird, because as Marvel's first outright comedy series, it is, to me at least, easily the least funny project in the MCU. It's certainly the one that made me laugh the least. And that's just because it's trying so hard to get a laugh. And that is really painfully obvious at points. Now, I love sitcoms. In fact, TV-wise, they are my first love. But I must admit, the style of sitcoms that I love are quintessentially British and belong to a very special golden era of British TV. I've always been a bit conflicted about American comedy, but I have in recent years found some American sitcoms that I've really loved, and others that have charming elements, even if they are ultimately overstretched. This is clearly very influenced by American comedy, and that just doesn't work for me. Cheap characters that exist purely for jokes, surface-level plots, and an over-reliance on cringe comedy, and all of this is so apparent in She-Hulk. The humour feels consistently dumbed down and strangely cold. So many of the jokes are just Jen reacting to all the weirdos and panto characters she meets and wisecracking at them. Stephen Fry noted this curious difference between British and American sitcoms, which I think might be a bit of a stumbling block for me. He says that the American comic hero is the wisecracker, who is above his material and above the idiots around him, whilst the British comic hero is a failure, who tries to better himself, but on whom life craps on from a gigantic height. British comedians always play the screw-up, whilst American comedians always play the wisecracker. It's British cynicism versus American optimism. And She-Hulk fits into this really nicely. With the possible exception of Matt Murdock, everyone Jennifer Walters interacts with is an idiot, and she treats them as such. The people she meets are not characters, they are punchlines for her to spit some barbed one-liners at. And to me, this makes the whole thing feel like a parody. The best sitcoms, and I'm including the best American comedies in this as well, are shows with great casts of characters. Funny, likeable, flawed, vulnerable and human characters. She-Hulk does not do this at all. With the exception of Jen and maybe Matt, everyone else in the show is a parody of a certain type of person with no distinguishing features outside of the plot function that they fulfill. There's the sassy best friend, the humorless boss, the feckless freeloading relative, the overbearing parents, the succession of pantomime dates who don't act like real humans. The best comedies hold up a mirror and we can see our lives in them. I have never met anyone like any of these people 
because they are not people. They are simply stereotypes adhering to a sitcom formula. They don't feel real. And it's not just because they are in this unrealistic world. Edmund Blackadder is a character who exists in a wink at the audience farce, but he's still relatable in his vanity, in his ego, in his sarcasm, and in his scheming. You can see yourself. These characters don't have these flaws. They don't have traits outside of the function that is required of them to make the wheels of the plot turn. They are vehicles of stupidity for Jen to speak down to. And maybe this is just a cultural difference. The British audience love our characters to be very introspective. It comes from a long tradition of poking fun at ourselves. That's why our comic heroes are so often social climbers trying to move up the ladder. Americans are less into that. It's their optimism. I respect that. But okay, even if you don't want to inject these characters with negative traits, just give them some complexities that make them feel like humans. This show is almost totally devoid of characters with character or people that feel like people. Good comedies write jokes and situations for their characters. To me, She-Hulk's greatest failing is that it writes characters for its jokes. The jokes and scenarios come first and the characters are written to suit whatever is required to make those jokes work. And this comes at the expense of making the show feel like it has any characters. Every new character, with the exception of our lead, feels inconsistent and motivated simply by whatever the writers need them to be or do or say so She-Hulk can shoot a couple of cutting one-liners in their direction. If the script needs them to become suddenly competent, they become competent. If it needs them to be idiots, which, let's be honest, 99% of the time is exactly what it needs, it just makes them stupid. And this is even more obvious when it comes to the returning characters. In spite of its consistent insistence over whose show this really was and that this isn't one of those cameo every week kind of shows, let's not get this wrong. This absolutely is one of those cameo every week kind of shows. We have four appearances from Emil Blonsky, three from Wong, three from Bruce Banner and two from Matt Murdock with about a billion other references in each episode with everything from Wolverine to Planet Hulk being hinted at. And with the possible exception of Matt... All of our three regular cameo stars were made significantly dumber for the sake of comedy and to allow Jen to assume our classic American sitcom hero role of a wisecracking smart arse surrounded by idiots. This is most obvious with Tim Roth's Emil Blonsky, who is so far from his 2008 character that I struggle to believe that this role was written with him in mind. Yes, it's been 14 years, so he will have changed as a person. But A, off-screen character development is cheap, and B, there is no scenario where Emil Blonsky would have become this idiot. The Blonsky we met 14 years ago was an intelligent, capable, distinguished member of the Secret Service who was also rash, vain, egotistical and impulsive, and that led to his downfall. This character, well, he isn't really a character. The show acknowledges that he was once abomination, but his entire role is basically to be a stereotypical hippie and recite haikus so Jen can be sarcastic to him. He isn't a character with anything to add. There's no purpose of him being there. He's just a joke. Wong has served slightly better, but that's probably only just because we've seen Wong be a bit silly before, and so that feels very in line with some of the stuff that we've had with him, but it still feels very forced. Does anyone remember in the original Doctor Strange film, when Wong's entire role was being that guy that Stephen kept trying to get to laugh, but he didn't have a sense of humour? He's become more quippy in subsequent years, and that's fine but it's difficult to reconcile that character with the one who appears in that scene when he brings the case of Donnie Blaze to Jen in episode four and is making a joke every 10 seconds. I say joke, I wasn't laughing, but the show makes it so painfully obvious where the jokes are supposed to be that I know that was the intent. Matt Murdock was pretty well served, but he's obviously not as good as he was in his own series. And one or two of the jokes feel a bit forced, especially in his quippy CGI fight with She-Hulk before he's unmasked. But maybe just because Charlie Cox is so likeable that it just still works for me. All of this leads me, unfortunately, to Bruce. Ten years ago, Mark Ruffalo was the star of the original Avengers film. He was the best character. He was excellent and he was served incredibly well by a script that clearly cared about his character. This clearly doesn't. A lot has been said about the, I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you exchange, so I don't want to dwell on that. 
But I have to add that whilst Jen being good at controlling her anger from years of having to deal with incompetent men explaining the field that she's an expert in is not a terrible idea, the way that it's angrily exposited at a character who literally had so much trauma from this process he tried to shoot himself is awful and it really hurts the character of Jennifer Walters. I really like Tatiana Maslany as an actress and I think she was really well cast. She brings a lot of fun energy to the part and manages to deliver some really poor dialogue very naturally and is clearly giving her all. Her performance when her world comes crumbling down around her shoulders at the end of the penultimate episode is excellent and she even sells some jokes that could come across as smarmy on paper but she delivers them in a way to make them oddly charming. But she's just not an interesting character. And I don't ever find myself rooting for her in any way. And that's for one very specific reason. She's not remotely heroic. The show opens with Jen rehearsing her closing argument in a case that she's working on. The speech that she's giving centres around the moral responsibility of those with power to use that power for good. I thought that that was quite a definitive opening statement from the show's creators, but as the series wore on, it became incredibly difficult to root for a wealthy middle-class lead who uses her superpower to represent the wealthy and the privileged, and in her work, just does exactly the same. Foolishly, I assumed that this was going to be going somewhere. The crux of Jen's original clash with Bruce was that she didn't want to be a superhero, And then in episode 8, I finally felt like this was coming to a head. We meet Matt Murdock, who in that scene in the bar, says that he spends his time doing pro bono work in Hell's Kitchen, often fighting for us in the us versus them, although he occasionally has to take on an expensive case to pay the bills. And Jen just outright admits that she, and I'm quoting here, works for them full time, and says that she doesn't have gas in the tank to do what Matt does. Matt then talks to her, telling her that she is in a position to do some real good, able to help people both within and out with the law. When I was watching this, I was like, yes, finally, it may be a few episodes too late, but the series is going to end with her accepting the responsibility that comes attached to the power that she has, bringing us full circle with that opening monologue. And it doesn't. It doesn't even one bit. It's so difficult to root for a character like that. It's so difficult to sympathise with a character like that. Daredevil's determination to help others, his selfless sacrifice and martyr complex, is what makes him so endlessly compelling, whilst his money issues make him relatable to the general audience. And it's not like rich people couldn't be relatable or that they couldn't be compelling because Tony Stark crawling across that floor to get the arc reactor in the original Iron Man film is so incredibly compelling but how can we relate to Jen's struggles of being sued for copyright infringement or why would we want her to succeed when she defends terrible people in court just because they've got rich parents that scene in the bar is the most naturalistically acted best written scene in this whole series and I was really hoping that it could act as Jen's Uncle Ben moment But come the finale, it seems that nothing has changed. No lessons learned, no character development. On a character level, this whole series is an exercise in futility that meanders for eight weeks before totally jumping the gun. Which brings me neatly on to the finale itself. The finales of these Disney Plus shows have almost always failed to stick the landing. With the exception of Hawkeye, they've all felt rushed and many dissolve into CGI fests. She-Hulk, however was never going to be your average Disney Plus finale, a fact that gave me some hope, but it was definitely misplaced hope. After montaging through the consequences of the last episode's cliffhanger with little to no substance, a series of bizarre coincidences lead half of the show's cast to the Intelligentsia meeting where everyone turns up for a fight and Todd, the unsurprising villain twist, uses Jen's blood to turn himself into a Hulk. This is incredibly stupid, which, it turns out, is the point, as Jen breaks out of the dumb episode through Disney Plus in a really fun meta moment to complain about the ridiculousness of the episode. But that's when it all goes downhill. Jen goes to the writer's room to complain about the plot being generic, ridiculous and predictable before she goes upstairs to speak to our Lord and Saviour Kevin Feige, who turns out to be an AI robot. She makes these exact complaints to Feige, who edits out the returning characters and brings Matt back and basically allows the lead character to just fix everything with no effort and no consequences, and then that all just happens off screen. 
We don't even get to see the ending that She-Hulk wrote take place. It just happens off screen. We just cut straight to the resolution. The problem is gone. Nobody's learned anything. And there are no repercussions or consequences. It was like a surrealist fever dream of an episode, and it wasn't anywhere near as clever as it thought it was being. There is nothing clever in writing a really lazy plot and then having a character point out that's lazy writing, or doing a generic plot line and have a character fourth wall break that fact. They acted like they were doing something so radical, when in reality all they have done is write something incredibly stupid and then point out that it's stupid with a wink to the audience. There's no quality in that whatsoever. You haven't written something more intelligent than what you're critiquing. You're merely being pretentious and writing something that has no value. This show is obsessed with expectation subversions, and that's all well and good. But you have to replace the expectation with something better. What we get is so cheap. And it's hilariously ironic that this situation comedy is critiquing superhero shows for doing the same plot over and over again when we have just spent nine episodes cycling through the most generic sitcom plots imaginable. Jen tries online dating. Jen goes to a wedding. Jen goes to therapy. I don't even understand what the writers were doing. We spend the whole series setting up all these threads about intelligentsia and Hulk King and Jen's blood and then slap the audience in the face for caring about the plot. The same way they set up Daredevil in episode 5 and then spent two weeks finding as many ways to write, haha, not this week, we got you again, ha ha ha, aren't we so funny? The meta sides were consistently one of the funnier, more entertaining parts of the show, but this isn't funny or clever. In reality, what we have here is writers wanting to write something fresh and vibrant, but their method of doing that is just to write a deliberately generic plot and then go, isn't that dumb? That isn't insightful or revolutionary. It's not an alternative. It's just cheap. And it doesn't say anything interesting about the superhero genre either, because it doesn't do anything new. It's not clever enough to do anything new. All it concludes is that the genre is repetitive and stupid, but the only alternative to doing that, according to this, is to do the same repetitive and stupid things, but point out that they are repetitive and stupid. It swings for commentary on the genre, and it ends up saying as little about the genre and the formula as it does about the themes that it barely scratches the surface with. The Intelligentsia plotline represents the only marginally interesting thing that She-Hulk had to say. By thinly parodying the attitudes of those who hated the show before it even aired because everything is so woke now, or why are all the superheroes now women? She-Hulk briefly threatened to say something interesting, but ended up just being a one-dimensional middle finger to a certain subsection of internet fandom that seems to have radicalised a very different part of the MCU's online fandom. Such open hostility towards that portion of the audience's parodying might be an odd creative choice, and writers trying to stifle criticism of their show before it's even been released might seem like a really self-conscious choice, but I maintain that this was a fundamentally good idea. It was just in its execution that it ended up being butchered. Every member of Intelligentsia is a parody rather than a person. We spent hardly any time with them, and we don't deconstruct their ideas or their motivations. They're just dumb guys. That's the show's words, not mine. The other feminist messaging within She-Hulk is also well-intentioned, but thin, and without anything interesting to say, or any interesting way to say it. Episode 1 might have had some interesting things to say about life as a woman, about being patronised or being harassed, but because it just has Jen angrily exposit the details of this grievance, it never feels like the ideas are developed. Instead, it just comes off as a writer blatantly ranting about the world through the mouth of their character. The best female-led superhero show remains Jessica Jones, and that show's fantastic first season deals with the themes of rape, harassment, and most importantly, control and male control over women. It does this through an expertly written lead character, an amazing and complex villain, and a tightly woven plot that has all of these themes tied into its very core. Rather than just as an odd rant that comes up once an episode just because it does, She-Hulk ultimately has things to say, but none of it has any depth or nuance, and ultimately it just feels hollow. The people being made fun of aren't actually watching the show anyway, and all this has achieved is to radicalise online discussions surrounding She-Hulk. 
Anyone who dares to criticise this show on Twitter is immediately accused of not liking it because they're sexist and they were the joke. I saw someone say they didn't like the finale today and the top response was, quote, someone didn't like being the punchline. We live in an age of toxic positivity. It's an infection in online fandoms. You must like this. I liked this. Therefore, anyone who doesn't like this must be a bigot. They must be one of these incels that the show is making fun of. The entire debate around the show is poisonous, and not because of the people who hated it before it aired, because most of them didn't even watch it, but because of the people who loved it before it aired. When they're criticising corporate media from one of the biggest multinational companies on the planet, become bigotry. All the show has succeeded in doing is contributing to an environment that is toxic for that same majority who exist in the middle, who don't hate or love a project just because it has a female lead, but instead judge the media they consume by its quality, and making those very people afraid to express their opinions. I don't even know how to conclude this video, other than to say She-Hulk is an absolute mess. It's the first MCU project that I haven't enjoyed overall, and after week upon week of watching the episodes as they came out, nine weeks of which I enjoyed, maybe I would just say half enjoyed one of the weeks, I'm just exhausted. I haven't even touched upon the actual quality of the episodes themselves. I've deliberately avoided talking about the CGI, which needless to say was very, very poor. But it seems harsh to criticise that because it's just a result of overworked and underpaid VFX staff. Instead, I just wanted to focus on the writing and that is this show's biggest failing. It's a legal comedy that fails both at the legal and at the comedy. It's a superhero show that fails both at the super and at the hero, and it's an attempt at social commentary that fails to say anything interesting about its textual themes or the metatextual themes about the genre that this show inhabits.